guys, this is Mara the Reading Hedgehog who needs to adjust my camera uh, with my video review of The Girl of Fire and Thorns by Ray Carson. It is the first book in the Bitter Kingdom trilogy slash The Girl on Fire and Thorns trilogy, whatever one you prefer. I prefer to say Bitter Kingdom because it is less of a mouthful to say. Um, so yes, synopsis time. As usual, I will read it because I embedded some of these stuff up because that's just the way I am. Unless it's a book I hated. So, oddly enough, yeah, I can sum those up perfectly fine. But, uh, once a century, one person is chosen for greatness. Elisa is the chosen one. But she is also the younger of two princesses. The one who has never done anything remarkable and can't see how she ever will. Now on her 16th birthday, she has become the secret wife of a handsome and worldly king, a king whose country is in turmoil, a king who needs her to be the chosen one, not a failure of a princess. And he's not the only one who seeks her. Savage enemies, seething with dark magic, are hunting her. A daring, determined revolutionary thinks she could be his people's savior, and he looks at her in a way that no man has ever looked at her before. Soon it is not just her life, but her very heart that is at stake. Elisa could be everything to those who need her most, if the prophecy is fulfilled, if she finds the power deep within herself, if she doesn't die young. Most of the Chosen do. So this was another uh, 4 out of 5 strawberry read. I really enjoyed it. Um, this has been on my list for a very long time and I finally picked it up this month because it was the pick for my young adult bibliobabble book club club. Can't talk today because I'm tired. Um, and I'm really glad we chose this one because I've been wanting to read it a long time and I'm really glad I finally got to read it because I really liked it. Um, I'm going to kind of talk about the cons first. Yes, this book does tend to drag in the middle. There is a lot of walking and talking about the same kind of stuff and not much really happening. Um, I do think this book could have been a lot shorter, um, but that being said, this book has really great characters. Elisa is a great protagonist. Um, it was kind of interesting because she's a protagonist who pretty much has a d d an eating disorder. Whenever she feels anxious or depressed or just upset, she will eat. And so she's beyond just kind of fat. She's obese in this. Um, and it was just kind of interesting because she wasn't a whiner. I mean, Elisa really is not good at doing anything. She can't do anything. She's a great military strategist, but because she's fat and inept and hasn't really ever done anything brave, no one takes her seriously. So her, her military strategy um, prowess isn't used very much. And she has extremely low self-esteem. I mean, she doesn't believe that even she can do anything. Even though that she, she has the godstone and is the chosen one, she doesn't you know, believe that she can ever live up to it, and she's not even sure she ever wants to. Um, but she's, somehow she's not a whiner. I mean, she, this is written in first person, so we are locked in our head, and she does pity herself, and bemoans the fact that she doesn't know how to change her ways. She wants to, but she doesn't know how, and we all know what that's like. But it never feels like she's whining because she keeps all these thoughts to herself. She never says it to anyone else, so it never feels like she's whining. Um, I just found her to be super, super sympathetic, even though, you know, I'm, I've never had an eating disorder, but I understand the anxiety and depression, and it can take on a lot of different kinds of, um, forms, and in her case, it was an eating disorder. Um, and it was also very interesting to just see her grow in this book. I mean, this book is a, is very much about her growing from a incompetent, uh, low self-esteemed princess to this really smart, I mean she was always smart, but actually using her smarts and intelligence and her gaining her confidence and becoming the leader of people and saving her kingdom from the invading kingdom and really just kind of showing everyone who thought she would never mount to anything, showing them up. And it was just, it was just really cool. She was a very intelligent, very uh, capable, very practical, uh, character once she, you know, gained her confidence and all of that. The side characters were also really good. Um, this is one of these books where there really aren't any side characters. I mean, there's minor characters, but they're so full of life that they're not really... You can't really classify them as minor characters. Um, but there's... The Bardi Guard's name. Hector. 
there's Hector, her her uh, husband's uh, captain of the guard. Uh, he's really cool. I really liked the relationship he and Elisa formed. And then there's her husband himself, Alejandro, who I had very mixed feelings about because I really did want to like him. I wanted him to his kindness t towards Elisa to be real and for him to actually come and love her, but then he does something that is just like, you are such a jerk. And then I kind of wondered if maybe the author wouldn't redeem him, and I kind of wondered if she could, because he's such a jerk after that. Um, and then there's, I think it's pronounced, uh, Cosme? I think I could be pronouncing that wrong. Um, her maidservant, who's kind of, at first I really hated her, but then you get to know her better, and she's really cool. And then there's Umberto, who is the rebel leader, who falls in love with Lisa, and Lisa falls in love with him. And he was really awesome. I just loved him. He was kind, and he was patient, and I just loved him so much. Um, yeah, this is just a really good book. I was kind of surprised. Um, I know a lot of people complained about the fact that here Elisa starts out as obese and then she loses weight and once she's lost a lot of weight she kind of gains her confidence and people start taking her seriously. But for me that was realistic because one, she spends months in the desert walking everywhere only eating when she can eat essentially. So it's realistic that she loses a bunch of weight and she never becomes skinny. Um, she just is no longer obese. So that was realistic for me and quite honestly I was like, you know, I don't know of anyone who is 100% actually okay with being overweight. Um, so of course it's going to affect your, your self-esteem. And so for me it was realistic that Elisa gained confidence when she became more physically fit and it was believable that people took her more seriously because I'm sorry people are jerks and they notice outward appearance and they're probably not likely to take an obese person seriously. I mean that's just how jerky people are. So for me that was all realistic. Another thing that really surprised me about this was how much it talks about religion without one feeling preachy and two without feeling like Christian fiction. I mean religion is a big part of Elisa's country. I mean she is the chosen of God. She has the God stone. But it, it felt like something that the characters actually did, did not feel like the author was injecting her own opinion. So I really liked that. It was believable, and it worked, and it was just new. It was unique. Um, I also really loved how the author borrowed from um, Spanish, Arabic, and a little bit of Indian, like India Indian, um, cultures, and like just the way they people looked and dressed and their customs and stuff and blended all together in this world. It was really neat. It you don't find that kind of influence in fantasy very often. So it was just really cool to read those influences. Uh, gave it a a different kind of flavor to the world. Um, but yes, I Girl of Fire and Thorns is uh, very very good and I thought the author tackled some of the issues she had in it very well. Um, and it totally felt like it was all the characters' opinions and stuff, and not the authors. And I can't wait to read the next one. So yeah, you guys have any questions or comments, leave them below. And as usual, if you want to read my review, I will leave the link below. And until next time, I hope you guys all have a great day. Bye!